Southern Pacific Golden Pig Service, Los Angeles Transportation Center. It doesn't get any more Southern Pacific than this. Also known as LATC, we're back in run eight and we've backdated. We've gone back in time to about 1988, 1989. The last of the golden air for the SP basically. And uh, we're gonna be running a train out of LATC down the Alhambra sub. I think that's one that uh, a lot of people are aware of or just doesn't get a lot of attention. But uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing today. Let's go over here to our train real fast. We'll check it out. Let's see, it's gonna be right over here. We've got the tunnel motors, four tunnel motors on the head end. Looks pretty nice. I need to turn this down just a tad here. There we go, that should be better. So uh, we've got our four tunnel motors here. This is our power for our train. And uh, here's our train right here. We're going to have to triple this thing over. So we're going to have to make a few moves to do that. But it's a nice old school intermodal train, right? We've got Santa Fe cars, Transamerica. Who remembers those from back in the day? Being uh, innovative, innovative intermodal service. I, those really stand out to me. See those a lot. Uh, Nashville, Ashland, and City Railway. That was one like that was some little short line that bought a boatload of uh, intermodal trailers and leased them out. So they're kind of smart on that. Preferred 45. So yeah, we've pretty much got the old school intermodal set up here and some of the old uh, UPS intermodal trailers as well, the 40 foot trailers. So yeah, this is our train for today. We're going to be going down to Alhambra. Our train is the LA. N O T. So it's uh, LA to New Orleans trailers. And uh, we should have one other train to meet out there. Oh, we got another sign over here, too. I never noticed that. That one right here. Very cool. I love the Golden Pig. Like that, that is a huge part of my childhood. Remember and seeing those. Never saw the SP in the Southeast. I don't remember it when I was a kid in Texas, but uh, I definitely remember the trailers. All right, let's go ahead and hop on our train. We'll see about making our moves and uh, doubling over. Let's do that. Uh, let's go to uh, Otto as well, too. We need to call him up. What is going to be uh, our frequency? We need to figure out who we need to dial up here. All right, I think I found it. This information was kind of hard to come by, but I found it. I didn't find it on any of the maps or anything like that, but it's going to be... Uh, it looks like it's going to be channel 42 uh, star 50. So let's do that real fast. Let's go channel 42. And we won't worry about calling up dispatcher yet. We won't do auto yet. All right. Let's go ahead and give her some power. Take it off. I hope I have it. Uh, that would help to uh, put it in forward, right? We got to. There we go. Now we're good. All right. Nice. Man, that's kind of a loud horn. Woof. Anyway, one final run eight video for a little bit. Uh, we'll do some more, but we're probably going to do some different things next week. We'll kind of see how it plays out a little bit. So we've got a few moves to make here. We're going to have to double over, which is a pretty, uh, it, it's, that's a common thing. You used to have to do that a lot when uh, I would take intermodal trains out of uh, East Thomas in Birmingham. We'd have to double over sometimes. I love the old school stuff. You guys know I gravitate towards the old school in just about everything I do, whether it's firefighting or railroading or whatever. I think it would be so incredibly cool one day to um, see a uh, see the ability in Run 8 to where you could like uh, backdate the route or make it uh, present day, even if you had to buy DLC. Uh, the back day that let's say uh, a 1988 DLC that kind of takes it back to old school uh, Southern Pacific. Or I don't know if you could do it per year, but you could, you could you could do like an old school SP DLC or old school SP ATSF, and then all you got to do is set your dates up here to whatever year that activates it, and then the route would have like the correct style signals and um, uh, track arrangement that sort of thing. You know, I think that would be pretty cool. I would be all about that, but. All right, so we've got him lined. Uh, we need to come back here. We'll grab this cut. Yeah, we'll grab that cut, and then we'll just keep swinging over. All right, come on back, SP. 
don't know what my engine number is. We need to figure that out. Yeah, that, you don't get any more Southern Pacific than uh, the Golden Pig and SD40T-2s, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, that's like the heart of the Southern Pacific. It really just is. I remember being fascinated by the SP as a kid. I really just was. I was absolutely fascinated by it as a kid because it was completely and totally foreign to me. It was something I just did not know. It was something that I wasn't really aware of. I I, I heard of it. I knew it was out there, but uh, you know, being back east, like you never saw SP locomotives or stuff like that. It, you know, you saw the cars. Of course, freight cars go all over the country, but locomotives not so much. Like, seeing the SP in Santa Fe was really rare. I think the, the first, like, West Coast locomotive I remember seeing as a kid was Santa Fe. All right, let's bring them on back. There must be a little bit of a drop down in here. All right, let's slow her up just a tad. There we go. Come on back. Nice. All right. That's good right there. That'll do. Let's go ahead and lace the air hoses. Connect that. I wonder, is the bottom of this cut, is the entire cut laced? Because probably more than likely it's not. Yeah, we're going to have to cheat a little bit. We'll have to shift F7. Get it going. All right. That should be good. We should have all our air and everything set. All right, let's go back forward. And we'll see about taking her ahead so we can double over to the next one there. Like, we'll have to bail it off a little bit. There we go. Uh, it may have a handbrake. I think it does. Yes, it does. All right, now we're set. Um, actually, you know what? Scratch that for a second. Let's hold right here. Yeah, let's just hold right here for a second because this is what I want to do. So we won't have to run into that problem again. We're just going to grab these. If it'll let me. Uh, are you going to let me grab it? Maybe, maybe not. I was going to say, I don't know. Let's see. If we shift F7, maybe we can get it all ready to go. There we go. All right, yeah, that's all laced, and we'll grab this one. Man, I'm having the hardest time grabbing these for some reason. I don't know why. All right, relinquish you. Grab this one. Shift F7. We should be good with this one, too. There we go. All right, so everything's laced up. Kind of like its own yard here. All right, now let's grab this guy again. Never mind. Let's relinquish the other train. Now we're good. All right, take him ahead. Yeah, release the independent. You know, I want to say the first time I, I, I remember maybe becoming like actually aware of the Southern Pacific as a whole was that movie Duel. Who remembers the movie Duel? The guy getting traced, chased by the 18-wheeler, uh, the gas truck in California, in Southern California, right? As uh, I think a few scenes with Southern Pacific in it. I think that's the first time I ever actually saw it. I think that's when I became aware of it. All right, let's see. We're good up here. Um, this is going to be, yeah, we may have to take the main, actually. We may have to take the main. So we're going to have to do something a little different here. Let's hop back in the cab and let's go. Let's see. Uh, Los Angeles is going to be... Uh, 50 DTMF let's call auto auto may not be active right now honestly he may not let's see no he's not that's not going to do us any good now let's get him going all right we'll have to do it again Okay, so uh, we need to request mainline authority because we got to line these hand throws and come out on the main here to uh, finish our double over. 
there's a lead. This is like a tail track or a, a yard lead or something right here, but I don't know if we're going to be able to push back behind it to clear it when we're ready to go. I'm not sure. We'll see what he says. So far, he's not saying anything. We may have to fire auto for a minute and take over this. I don't know if this uh, if this works or not. I've never tried it before. All right, let's go ahead and go full independent right here. He's not answering us, so I think what we're going to do is just... Um, we're going to fire him. We're going to line it ourselves. There's one other train out there, but he's way out there. He's way out there in the distance, so we shouldn't have to worry about him right now. So, yeah, we'll line his hand throws his crossover. All right, there we go. Beautiful downtown LA in the distance. Pretty much in the heart of LA right here. All right, we'll keep pulling this guy by. Yeah, there's a 0.8% grade coming out of here. Nice. No wonder we're slowing up so much. So we'll just go over to the next track and then we'll go over to the next one after that. And I need to make sure though, which one are we going to go to first? Really need to go this one right here. Okay, we'll just go to this one right here. Not exactly sure how they set these trains up. Maybe they had them pre-built and they just had them parked somewhere for the outbounds. You know, the Southern Pacific ops are like, it's really hard to come by that information. It's not easy to find. I've got, uh, I've got a few of their uh, blocking books that tells all their symbols and uh, how they block their trains, but it, it doesn't go into much more detail other than that. All right, so we made our last move. We're down here on the bottom of the train. We're not running a caboose. I don't think in 89 they would be doing that. I think those were pretty much phased out in the mid-80s, at least on trailer trains and stuff. But uh, We'll go ahead and attach an EOT. Is it open is the question. It looks like, yeah, okay, it is open. All right, let's go back to the head end. Let's kind of walk our train here, show you guys some of this stuff. Uh, yeah, nice train. Nice old school pig, right? And we've got some reefer cars down here, too. Let's see if I can find them. There we go. Who remembers these? These are always pretty sweet because they have the, uh, the like, the, the reefer units mounted up under the trailer instead of on the front end. All right, so we're eastbound on the Lanot. This is the L-A-N-O-T. Los Angeles, New Orleans trailers. This is actually a real Southern Pacific train back in the day. I think I got this out of the, it was an 87 or 80, 88 uh, book. The uh, blocking book. So basically what we need to do is just keep easing down here. Make sure we got a light. I don't even know where we would pick up our first light, to be honest. And let's go ahead and turn auto on again. All right, that's good with that. So, uh, let's dial them up. Let's tone them up and let them know that we're moving. 50 DTMF. Uh, let's see. What is our next lights? Request signal. Next signal, 1.8. Train track speed, 15. All right. Yeah, we'll just have to kind of ease along down there. We've got one uh, westbound. We got an inbound train to uh, LATC as well, too. Yeah, I think LATC was pretty much into the line right here. Like, I know they ran stuff northbound out of there towards uh, Brooklyn, towards uh, Oregon in that way. But I was trying to think of anything that just ran through here and, like, ran by LATC. Like, something out of the City of Industry or West Colton or something northbound, you know. And I couldn't come up with anything at all, so... 
I think er everything pretty much like originated or terminated here at uh, LATC. That uh, the sign that we started the video with the golden pig sign. That's actually that was a real thing. It stood out there forever. It was kind of a landmark. All right, signal's going to be 1.5, so I guess it's going to be down and around this curve here. Let's get our tags on so we can see where we're at because I have no clue. Like, I, I have zero clue. Soto Street overpass. Uh, we need to go to a different map. Okay, let's go to the Alhambra map. Yeah, no clue on the speed or into, like this is way foreign to me right here. Like I don't think I have ever run on this route whatsoever. Like I said, it's kind of a hidden one. It's uh, it's listed in game as the UP Alhambra sub. Like that's what it is now, of course, because they wound up with the Southern Pacific back in the day. But this was the old SP route. So you'd go, uh, you'd go east towards West Colton, then you had a choice. You could either go up the Palmdale towards the Hatchapi, you know, up Cajon Pass towards the Hatchapi that way, or you could go um, towards Yuma, and Tucson and Phoenix and uh, east that way. Man, that's a good grade out of here, 1%. Nice late evening departure out of uh, LATC. 18, 19. That took us a hot minute to make those moves. Uh, so what we're looking at, uh, we're going to be looking at, um, let's see, that's industry. That's not the one we need. Like this map has kind of got me tripped up a little bit here. We may have to go to the dispatcher screen here and look. Okay, so we got Alhambra, El Monte, uh, West Industry, Industry, East Industry, Walnut, Pomona, Montclair, Ontario, Guasti. Here's our train we're going to be meeting, so we kind of cheated a little bit, but it's going to be the Holat, Houston to uh, LA Trailers. That's it. These are all based on uh, real symbols from back in the day. Feel that. We don't need that. All right. Well, we can do 20 now. But we have to go down here looking out for a light, right? We don't know what we've got. Dispatcher could say, come on down, I got you a signal, but uh, his board could show something completely different. <laughs> it could be completely different. You've seen it in real life, absolutely. What is our, uh, what's our train stats? What do we got? Uh, 2.8 HPT. That's not bad. That's cool in the blocking book that I was looking at. I think they ran this at 3 HPT, so it's pretty dang close. Uh, 4,228 tons, 46 loads, zero empties, 208 axles, and it's going to be 4,500 feet. 4,600 feet. So our light should be up here somewhere. What are we going to be looking at? Alhambra is going to be our light. Our, that crossover is going to be our first light. I don't know if this track arrangement was the same back in the day, like in 88, in the late 80s. Probably not. I'm going to assume that there's been some changes made to it. I was trying to see if I could pick that light up. I just can't do it. You see, we got our uh, air conditioning going over there. We got the front door open. Got the poor man's AC going. And though they do have, uh, a, they had AC units on SP units. I don't know if these actually have it or not. Let's look and see real fast. Uh, he does have an AC unit. You know, I will say it doesn't work. It doesn't work. <laughs> I would imagine those things were broke all the time. I don't know. I don't know how much effort they would put into keeping those things running. Maybe they did because it just got hot as could be out here, especially when you're going out across the Mojave or going out across the desert. All right, I can't, I can't spot that light. I really just can't. Let 
We don't want to get into trouble with our Lanots. Uh, where are you? Man, I hate the signals in curves like this. It just really sucks, especially when you're not familiar with the area. We should have called for a pilot. Where is it at? Man. It's like the longest half mile ever in the history of mileage. Yeah, as soon as we get that light, we're good to go. We just need to get the light. <coughs> Yeah, I see CP Alhambra, the, the tags popped up, so maybe we'll see here and just say, yeah, we're kind of slowing up for it because we don't know. Got to clear sweets. Of course, it's a Vader. That's kind of lackluster, right? Like, I'm no fan of the Vaders. I'm really just not. I think Railroad's lost all their character when they started using the Vaders. Like, everyone uses them, right? Like, <laughs> everyone looks the same. It's all homogenized and generic and they've lost all their personality they really just have all right let's open it up let's get going now we got us a good light the mountains in the distance there i think late evening is like the best time to run in la i just it just really kind of highlights the uh the distant mountains back up to 20 now uh, still 1% grade all right clear by Alhambra I don't know if the SP called signals or not back in the day I, I really don't I know that wasn't a thing like uh, the first trains I remember hearing calling signals in the southeast was during the seaboard system I think that was a thing that they had started and then it just kind of carried on from there but I don't I don't think they did. I don't think they did prior to Seaboard. There you go. Nice view of our shadow there. That's pretty sweet. This is a cool area. I like it. Like I said, I've never been down here before. I've never run this line ever. It's uh, it's completely new and foreign to me. Brand spanking new. It's nothing like railroading by the seat of your pants. All right, there we go. Our, uh, our speed should pick up right here. We'll go ahead and count it off. Get a little bit fast. Come out for all just tad. Nice. Right, got some storage tracks over here. So I guess that's the storage. I don't. What is this track? Is this like a. Du I guess it's a double main. It's like one's concrete, one's wood. I'm curious to see where they have us meet the uh, Olat. Yeah, it's definitely a cool area. It's like I said, it's a little hidden area. I I don't think it gets a lot of attention. Like you don't you don't see a lot of people uh, talking about running the Alhambra and Run Eight, or you know, it's always like Tatchpee, Cajon, 
uh, the main routes. Like, this is an outlier, right? All right, 1,500 more feet will be out of the 20. Should be at least. I don't want to peek at the dispatcher's board anymore because I want the meet to be a surprise. I don't like knowing this stuff in, in advance, right? Like, I want to be surprised by it. All right, we got another clear. I guess they may have ran beat trains through here back in the day, right? Like, they could have come down through here. I want to say I've seen a video of a beat train going through West Colton eastbound. And so that automatically would have taken it through here. I don't know where it would have originated, but... All right, there we go. We're out of our uh, 20. Let's go ahead and open it up. There we go. Just made transition. That's really cool. All right, I've heard engineers talk about all their units making transition at the same time, which is like really rare and odd, but if they all make transition at the same time, the slack runs in and then it jerks out and then it gets a knuckle, usually about 13 deep. But I want to say in this in this electronics of the locomotive, they have something where it kind of is supposed to vary between locomotives, like so they all don't transition at the same time. I got this back up just a little bit so we can see better. About right there is good. All right, four big tunnel motors on the head end. We got that uh, real grand units. I guess it's third out, right? Third out unit. So this would be after the merger with the Rio Grand. Of course, that was a result of the uh, failed uh, Southern Pacific Santa Fe merger. Where uh, they were denied the merger and they had to sell one or the other off. So they sold the SP. Rio Grande bought it and uh, renamed to the SP. I think that's how that went down. Kind of, kind of a weird situation. All right, so we just went through Alhambra. Next one's going to be El Monte. Yeah, El Monte is going to be it for us. And then industry. I don't know. I don't know how far we'll go. We'll see. We'll kind of go with it a little bit here and see. We'll at least go through our meat with a whole lot. There we go. Got 10% uh, downhill, so we're picking up some good speed here. This should be a good running train. It shouldn't be bad. 2.8 HPT. Well, 4,500 feet, give or take. I started backing off throttle just a tad. Gotta see what she does. Uh, I was looking for any other speed restrictions or anything. It looks like we're good to go. Yeah, I think we're good from this point. I don't see anything coming up. Oh yeah, it's uh, 0.8 down now, nice. 
We've got to clear main number two, wherever this is at. Going out of the throttle because we may have to go into dynamics. Yeah, that's the thing It sucks is I don't know how long this grade is. So, you know, if it's a little short one, then you kind of know, hey, yeah, I don't need to bother. Yeah, let's go into dynamics. She's starting to run with us pretty good here on this straightaway. Looks like our speed's going to pick up to 60, so that's all right. We'll go ahead and count it. Yeah, let's see if she starts to slow up. There's nothing like railroading by the seat of your pants. Yep, she's slowing up. All right, that's good. than that too, right? All right, I think we're gonna hang out right here. All right, track speed 60, so we can come out a little bit more on the dynamics. All right, another clear. Just gotta be aware of that meat up there somewhere. We got that weird sun reflection there. Um, I'm wondering, can we can we fix that? No, that doesn't change it up. All right, yeah, we'll just have to go with that. I was going to say if she was gain on her own just a little bit, but she's not, so we're going to pull on it some. Now, Southern Pacific train speeds are something I'm most definitely not familiar with, but I think we could at least do 60 in this train in, in like one of their old school trailer trains. Surely we should be able to. That's what we're going to do. We'll do 60. I think maybe a max of 60. I, I really honestly don't know. There, we got another clear. Wow, 1.28 down. That's a shock. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. We're going to grab some air. We may have to do it. Yeah, let's grab some air. We'll grab a little air. We'll go in light dynamics. Let's draw it on down 10. A little more. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. 1.28% downhill right here, man. This route will keep you on your toes, guys. Holy cow. Oof. A bad spot. Like a sun kick or something there, too. I don't know what that was, but that wasn't good. All right. Let's come out of dynamic a little bit here. So we want to get a little slow on us. So that Southern Pacific track maintenance back in the day, they done deferred all of it. <laughs> they were really tight on money. That's why their uh, locomotives got so nasty. <clears throat> It's so junky too, like they, they were known for junk power. I 
I think that was prior to the uh, Rio Grande buying them, though. I think after that, things kind of got a little better for them, maybe. Looks like we might have to go back into power. It's done flattened out on us. I don't even have a great profile for this. Like, I literally, I don't have anything, so I don't know what it's like. There is the speed limit here. 60, 60, all right. All right, she's pre-rolling, so uh, we could bump her two notches, maybe. Go two more. Like I said, wiping the throttle isn't going to hurt you. It's not going to hurt you one bit as long as you know when to apply it. I know they demonize it now, right? Like you're not supposed to now, but... It's not going to hurt you. You'll be okay. I promise. Just mainly you want to look at uh, your speed. Like if you're rolling along, you're not pulling, you're not really high amps, you're just kind of drifting along high speed. Yeah, you can wipe it like no tomorrow. All right, it's going to be Interstate 10. Oh, yeah, nice. Here's our other train. It's going to be pretty sweet. Nice. There you go. The whole lats. You done met the whole lats. We'll, we'll go a little bit further. I don't think we're going to go all the way to West Colton, but we'll go a little bit further. We go ahead and peek now that we know where we're at. Uh, we're coming up on industry. Uh, yeah, this is a good little ways, you know, like this absolutely is. It's a good little ways. Um, we might go to like Walnut or Pomona or something like that. There we go. I know the clear down there. It didn't look like he had us lined up. Okay, there we go. He just lined us. So we don't have any other trains to meet. I don't know of any other ones to meet. I mean, other than like trailer trains going into LATC, I don't know really what else would come down through here for the SP back in the day. Takes a little research and that stuff's hard to come up with. All right, let's go back with our uh, tags there. 605, I-605. She's running good. This is a good running train. All right, still got to clear. just do pure SP ops like back in the day right I think this is the most enjoyable stretch stretch to do it on <clears throat> sorry guys you'll have to excuse me I've been like I've been under the weather a few days some kind of cold everyone's had it like it, all my kids have had it I've got it so I'm all coughing and hacking and my throat's like scratchy and all that stuff. But anyway, like for pure SP ops, I think this is the most enjoyable. Like it's just uh, 
it's a little bit of work to it if that makes sense like you've got to do a lot of throttle modulation you know we had to grab some air had to go into dynamics uh, we get to run a good speed uh, it's not one of those situations where you just put it at number eight and sit back and just let it do its thing for an hour or two right like you have to kind of work with it So I'm going to assume this was the uh, freight yard for the SP. I don't think they did any kind of uh, freight at LATC. I think that was all trailers. That'd be your slot freight here. And then, of course, Wes Colton. Back during the uh, hump yard boom, right? Or the early 70s, Wes Colton, Barstow, Rice Yard, all those big fancy computerized hump yards and you know state-of-the-art hump yards those were the thing they were they were all pretty much built about the same time period all right so we're coming by industry we've got uh we've got the yard there we've got uh the middle crossover and then we got east industry and then we'll have walnut yeah i think we'll stop around walnut somewhere over there maybe just to the east of it of course pomona That's going to be the switching lead over there on the right for industry. It's going to be populated with some UP stuff. You'll have to ignore that. Like, you know, if you were to do this like a true SP session, it would take a while to kind of set all this stuff up. Who knows? Maybe they're borrowing some UP engines. A little bit of a grade here, dragging down some, 0.5. What's it look like up here? Yeah, it looks pretty, either it's gonna continue climbing or it's flat. Either way, we got a clear by uh, middle industry, or uh, yeah, middle industry and then east industry. So far, it's been a lot of fun. This is a really fun route to run. You know, you hear like Cajon and Tatch speed where it's at, but you know, it's really like going up, there's nothing to it. You just put it in number eight and you sit back and let it do its thing. And that's basically all there is to it. Like there's not a lot of road crossings. There's not, there's just not much of anything going on, right? I think this stretch route is way more action-packed as far as like things that you have to do. All right, we've got a clear, but we're going through a turnout and I have no clue what that turnout speed is. Let's grab some air, let's draw it down. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that turnout speed is. That kind of just 
popped up on us. Uh, 10 mile an hour, really? It says industry siding, 10 mile an hour, what? But it says we're... Yeah, I don't know, guys. I don't know what this speed is. The The map I'm looking at says 10 mile an hour, but like the, the track speed says 60. Yeah, I don't know. That's got me puzzled a little bit, but we'll just, we'll do what we can do. We'll do 30. We'll, we'll say it's 30. I have no clue on this right here. It could be 10. It could be way more than that. I really, I, I don't know. I, I don't see them doing 60 through that. Maybe, maybe 50, 30, 40, somewhere in there. It could be 10. I don't know. I have no clue. Let's go ahead and count it off. At least we only got 4,500 feet, so it's not a big deal. Yeah, that's one of those deals. Um, man, I don't even know if I have a timetable for that. I know I've got some old UP timetables for the LA sub, but I don't know if I have anything SP through here. I'm trying to think of sites that I've seen this stuff or where I've looked at it before. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there is. There might be something floating around out there. I mean, I did find the uh, blocking book. The blocking books are really cool. If, you have, if you've never seen one, check one out. Um, they basically list all the train symbols that they run for that year, right? And then it tells the blocking, like how they block the trains. Like this, this particular train here might would have, uh, I mean, I didn't do it, but it could have like a Tucson block. It could have a Houston block and then the main New Orleans block. So like the Tucson would be on the very bottom, then the Houston and then the New Orleans would be on the head end. So when they roll into Tucson, they just cut that off and leave it. They'd probably pick something else up, maybe a Houston block or New Orleans or something, you know. Yeah, that switch back there has got me totally puzzled. Like, uh, let's see, what are the other... The siding at Walnut is 25. Uh, Pomona. It doesn't say, it doesn't give a speed on that one. West Pomona, East Pomona. So that looks like that's just gonna be double track. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, that's gonna require a little research. Like if, if if we're gonna get qualified for the Alhambra sub, we need to uh, we need to know this stuff, like we need to figure it out. But you know, I could go back to an old SP timetable and it'd be completely different. That could very well be the case. Like this could be completely different from the SP times. Who knows what Uncle Pete did, the Borg after he took over everything. Who would have thought all those big railroads are gone now? You know, like it's just down to a handful. Really just kind of sad. Well, I'm not into rail fanning or anything now. Like it just doesn't appeal to me. It, it really just doesn't. Like it's all the same thing. It's all the same, you know? <laughs> it's all BNSF or UP or see it. Like it's all the same. It's all the same locomotives. It's all the same paint schemes. There's really just not much variety or anything to it. I like machines now, don't get me wrong. I love the equipment. The equipment is fascinating, but. All right, well, let's go into Walnut. I think that's where we're gonna end it. We'll see if we pick up some speed. Yeah, we'll go to the other side of Walnut and we'll end this. That Alhambra is like a hidden gem. You don't know it's there.
little bit of a grade out of here too. 0.83 up. That's definitely a little bit of a challenge. It's even more challenging that I don't know it, that I'm not familiar with it. Yeah, I guess this light up here is, uh, I was going to say that was the 505, but I don't think it is. Yeah, here's the 506 right here. That's going to be Walnut. Okay, West Walnut. If we kept on going uh, east, we'd have a uh, Walnut, we'd have Pomona, and then we'd have Montclair, and then Ontario. And then I guess the next place after that is Guasti. I guess that's how you pronounce it. I'm really not sure. And then you would have uh, West Colton. Colton Crossing. I love the horn. That's pretty sweet. Just like horns, that was another thing that uh, was really kind of a, a, a characteristic, a trait of railroads, you know? Like a lot of them had their own horns that they liked to use. The OSP trains are very identifiable by their horn. All right, Walnut is going to be 6,000 feet. It's 25 mile an hour siding. Looks like Pomona is going to be double track. Like I said, we won't go that far. We're going to end it here in just a second. Coming up on East Walnut. Yeah, I need to follow along this on Google Earth. I think it'd be interesting to look at it. Kind of backdate it. Go back through the years, see what it looks like. All right, clear East Walnut. 1.05% uh, up through here. Looks like we're going to have a little bit of a climb four ways. Yeah, I definitely, I need to research this route more. I need to see what information I can find. See if I can find some timetables, track charts. Mike could come up with a track chart for this. I'm not sure. I know of a few online, but... Man, 1.17. There's one more crossing out here I want to go over. So we can hear that uh, fine SP horn. Then we'll call it a day. There it is right there. At the 508. 508.6. We don't have a whistle post, though. I'm going to have to get uh, maintenance away out here. That's a pretty good climb through here. It looks like it continues on, maybe up around these mountains and then it drops off again, these little hilltops right here. Okay, we got 
some non Vaders. That's nice. All right, there we go. All right, last crossing. That's going to do it for this one, guys. Just a little peek at the Alhambra sub SP style. I don't even know if it was Alhambra sub on SP. It may have been called something else. Maybe like that might be a UP term. I'm not really sure. Anyway, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to hit that like, subscribe, ring that bell. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Love all of you, and uh, we'll catch you on the rails next time. Peace.